what are the objects to Firestore. First, we need to get our database instance. For that, we are going to import the get app package from Firebase app and get Firestore from Firebase Firestore. Once they are imported, we are going to go to our add party function where we are going to get our Firebase application instance and then we are going to pass that Firebase instance to get Firestore to get our database. Then we are going to get a reference to the parties collection. For that, we are going to get the collection function. Let's also import that from Firebase Firestore. And we are going to pass both the database instance and the path to the collection, in our case, parties. To add the document to that collection, we are going to call the add doc function. We are going to pass the collection reference and the object we are going to save. Let's not forget to import add doc from Firestore. The object we are going to pass there is the result of our form. Now we save and when the page reloads, we can say, uh, this is a new event. Description is whatever we want. The image URL, you can pass whatever you want here for now. And for the date, you pick a date. When you click save, you can go then to your Firestore application and you are going to see here it added the new document that we just created. We want to take this opportunity to reuse this form so that it can also be used whenever we are updating a party we already have in the database. For that, we have to make a few changes. First, we are going to go to the app routing module where we have our URL and we are going to add a parameter to our URL. That parameter is going to be called ID. Once we save that, we are going to get an error because that route we had there no longer exists. To fix this, we are going to go back to create party, but now we are going to pass a parameter, in this case, the event ID. For now, we're going to type new. And you see the form is there and nothing has changed. The idea is that in the ID parameter we can either pass the ID of an existing party or the new keyword so that we know that this is a new party that's going to be created. To get this parameter from our page we're going to go into the constructor and we are going to inject route. This is of type activated route and this is part of the Angular router package. Now we are going to use the route property inside of our ng on init function. We are going to get the id parameter and we are going to log it to the console so that you can see here. Now we have the id. Here we are going to create a conditional and if the id is different than new, then what we want to do is we want to get that document from the database and update our form with that data. To get the documents from the database, we need to also initialize our application and initialize our database. But since we already did that here, what we can do is we can move this part out of the function. We can put it as class variables, and then we need to update this to call the class variable. Here first, let's make sure everything is working okay. You see that it's stored in the database, so everything is working. Now we go back to the application, Inside our conditional, we're going to create a reference to the current party document. For that, we are going to use the doc function, and we also get to import that from the Firestore package. Once we have the document reference, we are going to create a listener with on snapshot. On snapshot is also a function from the Firestore package, so let's import it there. We are going to log the results of on snapshot to make sure that it's getting the data we want. And to test it, we're going to change the new ID for an ID we already have in the database. So when we load the page, you see that it's loading an object from Firestore. To update the data from the form, Angular Forms offers a handy function called setValue. We can call that from our form itself. And what that function expects is for us to pass all of the properties for the form. In our case, let's say, for example, the title. We're going to have an error because set value expects the entire object to be passed. So we're going to do the same for image, description, and date. Let's just change it here real quick. Now when you save and reload the screen, you see that it's auto-populating the form itself. Let's remove this log from here since we don't need it anymore. Now we need a way to tell our add party function 
when it's going to update an existing document and when it's adding a new document to the collection. For that, just like in our ng-init function, we are going to use the ID. So since this ID is now going to be used in multiple places, let's take it out of this function and convert it into a class variable. Now we moved it out of the function and when we save and reload the page, you see that everything is working as expected. Then inside of our add party function, we are going to ask the same question. Is the ID new? If it is, then everything continues to work as expected and we are going to add a document to the collection. If the ID is different than new, then it means it's going to update a document into our collection. For that, first we need to create a reference to our document. We do that with the doc function and we pass the database instance and the path to our document. Then we are going to pass that reference to the setDoc function. The setDoc function is also part of the Firestore packages. And we are going to pass the data we are going to store in the database. In this case, it's the same. It's the value of our create party form. And if you see that if I change something in here, for example, let's add more emojis and then I click save. When I go back to the console, it's going to show me that update in the database. One thing we can do as a best practice is to prevent our users from clicking the save button multiple times. That can mean that they add multiple documents when they actually wanted to add just one. For that, we're going to redirect the users back to the homepage once they submit the form. To do that, we're going to use Angular Router. And for that, we're going to import it and inject it into our constructor. As you see, it auto-imported it from Angular Router. Then we are going to go back to our add party function. Both the add doc and the set doc functions return a promise. So we can go here and type then. So after the promise is resolved, we are going to call this dot router navigate by URL and this is going to get our users to the root URL. So if we save and reload, you see that I have this here. I'm going to remove some of the emojis and when I click save, it takes me back to the home page. 